All right, welcome back everyone. We have about 20-ish minutes and we figured uh, before closing statements or um, dedication of merit, just to open the floor to whatever insight, compassion, wisdom arose, and anything that uh, was uh, kind of an event for you that you want to share and um, inspirations moving forward. So anybody, uh, just kind of the floor is for anybody to share uh, what this conference has meant to them or what they want to see moving forward. Um, yeah. So, anybody who wants to share anything at all? <laughs> hot mic. This is the hot mic. It's very hot. <laughs> oh, we get a taker. <laughs> You. My name is Betty, um, and um, I want to really appreciate the opportunity that this, this conference has offered to, to me personally and through me to the center that is my um, Dharma refuge, which is Cambridge Insight Meditation Center, mm -hmm. uh, which I'm, there are many, several people here who also um, attend that center and hold it in a very sacred way. And... Um, and, and particularly my appreciation is about the courage this conference has given me to take this uh, inspiration back to CIMC, uh, which is not, uh, does not hold this conversation in an, in a, as an aversion at all. I want to give that impression. But um, uh, it's a messy conversation. And we're not a messy place. <laughs> And so um, I feel inspired and encouraged and supported to go back to CIMC and create a space for some mess. Yeah. So thank you for that. As a resident of the Cambridge Zen Center, which is also very uh, uh, conspicuously spotless, <laughs> I'm looking forward to creating a little turmoil myself. in the Shambhala Center where um, I was at other places which we won't say where they were but I did go to the Shambhala and I did find it to be wonderfully messy so I just want you to know it's available. <laughs> <laughs> they have a long history of that. That's good. <laughs> yeah, that's your right. I mean, you're right, yeah. going to call a spade a spade, you know? <laughs> messy from the start. I know. Anybody else want to share anything that this conference has kind of uh, inspired them to carry forward or any criticisms, ways in which um, issues were not addressed that uh, you felt like were very, very absent or conspicuously absent and moving forward that uh, we should really consider? So this doesn't need to be feel good. This can be a messy space too. <laughs> Oh, well, do you take the mic for the, for the video. Yeah. Um, I just think the one messy question that I'm left with is, um, you know, we talked this morning about uh, inept attempts for sanghas to uh, deal with issues of racism and white privilege. And I also think it's worth considering, um, are there aspects of... Buddhism, whether it's American Buddhism or Buddhism from any part of the Buddhist world, that are um, actually problems and wrong, potentially, and are getting in the way of, of the way that we are trying to approach these issues. And if, as Professor Hallisey said, um, Buddhism could transform and grow in this encounter, mm -hmm. um, what could those issues be? And how could shining a spotlight on them help it uh, become more and better. Mm. I 
just like to know if you're going to have more of this type of thing going on on a continuous basis. Well, uh, I, I guess I'll be the first to announce that we're very happy that uh, apparently you need to do something t twice for there to be for it to be annual. Um, <laughs> So this, this is now officially the first annual conference at Harvard on Buddhism and race. Uh, so the leadership of the Harvard Buddhist community moving forward, we kind of talked in the hallway, are committed to doing this at least once a year, a conference like this. Um, so this is the first annual, and then the second annual will be next year. And... Um, I, I haven't thought much beyond five o'clock today, but, <laughs> but uh, hopefully we can uh, keep the conversation rolling in, in a robust way. And I think the, the, main, the main motivation behind this is that it, but this, that bringing us together from multiple lineages and backgrounds is that this would be a conversation multiplier that we would start to just till the soil and realize how rich uh, these issues are and how, how much they affect all of our lives so that we can go back to our sanghas and create uh, vibrant conversations there. Because there's no way in one day and two panels we can, we can really even delve into it. Um, so it's kind of, it's on us now. Um, to create the opportunities for this conversation wherever we go. And um, that's kind of an aspiration behind the conference too, is to kind of embolden each other to uh, go make messes. Fruitful messes. Oh, this was just a suggestion I had suggested to Darren. I, I still think it'd be kind of a cool idea if there was, um, if it was possible out of this going forward to maybe come up with a resource reader that was kind of a compilation to some of the sort of articles and mm. uh, sources that people had mentioned. Yeah, I, I can share all my bookmarks on my MacBook with you. <laughs> um, the Pluralism Project at Harvard also has um, a research report from 2006 on issues of Buddhism and race in America. I would direct you to their website to find that. And um, I am also a, a employee of the Pluralism Project and am will be uh, typing up a research report of this conference. Um, it can include any resources that Chris and Darren want me to include, and that will also go up on the Pluralism Project, Project website. So um, if you don't know Pluralism Project, do check it out. And um, we are in the process of updating our website, so don't be fooled by <laughs> how old it looks. There is so much... Um, uh, really important and recent information there. So please check it out. And it's not, not an explicitly Buddhist space, but um, my field ed placement is at the Humanist Hub on JFK, and we're doing an investigation into deconstructing whiteness through a film series and discussion forum. Uh, and that's going on March and April. And so if you have any interest in, in doing that work, we're going to be doing that work there. Um, What's the website here? It's uh, the Harvard Humanist Community, or no, Humanist Community at Harvard, the Humanist Hub. And um, yeah, so I'm trying to initiate programs to do okay, things so there. The Everything is it's totally free, open to the public, everybody. Buddhists, welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Even Buddhists. <laughs> All right. So, um, any, anybody else? A little popcorn? All right. So I guess just to reiterate that this has been an incredibly blessed opportunity for Darren and I to be part of this and for all of you to come and share your voices and to hear each other's voices. And uh, hopefully this conference itself is modeled uh, the kind of community and, and openness and receptivity that we're, we're trying to create in our sanghas, and that this is obviously just the beginning of many conversations that hopefully you feel empowered to uh, reinvigorate 
if they're already happening or initiate if they haven't already begun in uh, the contexts you go to after this. And um, the whole point is that uh, we learn how to help each other suffer less. And that's, that's uh, the Buddha said, I teach two things and two things only, suffering and its end. And, you know, the way racialized constructs have produced suffering in our lives is, is extreme. And so it's gonna take some courage and persistence to look into them. And uh, we need each other to do that. We can't do it in isolation. It's created collectively and it has to be resolved collectively. Um, so hopefully we can take a little bit of that spirit with us when we leave and um, help the world suffer a little less and uh, come into contact more deeply and richly uh, and live the insight of interconnection and interbeing that is the reality of what we are and just remove the obstacles to that. So in that spirit, I think well, we can close. I'll ring a gong because it seems like an appropriately Buddhist thing to do. And uh, Not this guy. This guy's a champ. Are you ready? Breathing in. Breathing out. May the sound of the spell permeate every corner of the universe. May all beings who hear it be relieved of all anxiety and sorrow. Thanks, everyone.